children of Azim. Healing robe, casting robe. I don't, I don't think I'm going to need that. I just got one. So in that case, I'll probably take the kudzu healing robe. You don't think they... No, of course not. He and the Gosetsu will come out at any minute now. I suppose we could chat a little while while we wait. Oh! So the other day, I said to Alice, I said... Hmm? What'd you say? Well, don't interrupt the story. I wanted to hear the story about Alice. And then Yugiri explained what hentai was. Mission accomplished. Everything still in one piece? More or less, I. That mountainous monstrosity came as quite a surprise. Who knew that the steppe held such secrets? I see the two of you emerged similarly unscathed. Well then, by my reckoning, there is naught left to prevent us from taking part in the Nardam. What do you jabronis want? You! Yea, you who have walked Bardom's metal. Newborn warriors of the steppe. Our Han demands an audience. You will come. It's the Yellow Turban Rebellion from Dynasty Warriors. I remember those clothes. He's Oranir, isn't he? Mm -hmm. What should we do? Ordinarily, I would politely decline. But this may be an opportunity to assess their strength. And we do have some time before the Nardum begins. If it all goes to plan, they will be fighting for us soon enough. What say you? Shall we go and greet our comrades-to-be? Sure. If they start any trouble, we kill them. Whatever happens, we shouldn't keep Siren and the others waiting. Let's be ready to make a swift exit, all right? We accept Johan's generous invitation. Lead the way. Here we are. We're up in the big soup bowl. This is a, absolutely the most complex and modern structure in the entire plains. Two banners. So it's not just Oranir we're dealing with. Most radiant brother Magni, we have brought the ones you seek. You conquered Bardem's metal. What of it? As warriors of the Mall, I. You were the Han here, yes? Why have you summoned us? Mayhap to propose a joint endeavor? Nay, Doman, we shall not speak as equals. Born of the sun are Oranir, and born of the earth 
are you? You're calling me dirty. When I learned of trespassers, I bade my warriors take their measure to flay them if they failed. But if by the grace of Azim they should survive their trials and emerge anointed, then bring them hither to pay tribute. Tribute, should it prove satisfactory, shall earn you the favor of the sun. His beloved shall bask in his radiance, and their supplications be duly considered. How about I pay you the iron price? So you butt. want us to bow down and serve you? What if we don't feel like it? There you go. That's how I feel. The defiant will suffer in shadow. It would be an affront to the resplendent Azim himself to refuse this generous offer when by rights you should be condemned. But in lieu of tribute, swear fealty to the sun. Pledge to him your body and soul. Promise to serve him unto death, and you may know his glory. Praise the sun. A generous offer granted to but few. Though perchance this is too merciful. I don't know if I'm gonna be a sun bro in this situation. I might like to keep it down and dirty with the earth. It seems our brothers of the Budiga want you. Budiga. The men only. Like the Borlak and women. Though you know them not either, I'm sure. No matter. All you need know is that you will serve one way or another. Sure about that? That much does indeed seem plain. However, as we are but newborn warriors who know little of your customs, we struggle to conceive of ways in which we might be of service to the most gracious and illustrious son. You make mock of us, Doman. Do not do so again. You mad, bro? You will be given a task. It will be difficult. You will carry it out. When you have accepted this, you may ask me what it is. I don't know why he's so angry. All I did was politely tell him to piss off. I'm pretty sure we could take him. Just saying. Why do we always follow these people's orders? So you are the first to step forward. Hmm. Bold. Or reckless. I see why Didacool favors you. The Nadam approaches. And the Oranir will reign supreme once more. Such is the will of Father Azim. Yet only fools think to triumph for the grace of the gods alone. And we are not fools. Your task will be to aid us in our preparations. Batu will tell you the rest. Okay. Seriously though, why are we doing this? I don't want to help you. Warriors of the Steppe, by the grace of our most radiant brother, you will not die this day, but instead be granted an opportunity to contribute to our cause. Rejoice, for this is a great honor indeed. Serve well, and you will be rewarded. Question. You keep calling Magni your most radiant brother. You're not related to something, are you? 
all Orini are descendants of Father Azim. But if you mean to ask if our mothers were one and the same, then no. The most radiant is the elder brother, to we younger, the strongest, and most deserving of respect. No more interruptions, your duties are as follows. You, the red one, you will milk our beasts. I thought, I swear to God I read that as milk our breasts for a second. Holy... <sighs> to grow strong, one must be well fed. And we have great need of kumis and cheese. Is, is that it? I mean, I'm not happy about all this, but I suppose I can go along for now. You, the one who lumbers is a mountain. Hmm. An old warrior, I see. We have arms and armor in need of repair. Go and speak with our menders. I have no talent for delicate work, but if that is your wish, then so be it. You, the insolent fool. As for you... This one carries the fire. The Buddha God will take his measure. Seek my comrade outside, tending to the stores. He will give you your task. You will know him by his cloth. Unlike they of the yellow, we are of the green. I, for one, would welcome the opportunity to learn more of the Buddha guy and their ways. It would be an honor. We shall speak of your task outside, with me. My task is to kick your ass. How about that? Well, before anything else, a tune. Now, there should be a current. Right. There it is. Next to the Falcon Porter. And that should be the last exploration based ether current. Yep, and the rest, the other three, will come from quests. One of them will be from the main story, as usual. Batu. Your name, foreigner? Zuma Kalitz, then. You are to dive into Azim Kat, below the Dawn Throne and gather sore grass from the lake bed. It is an invaluable ingredient of many medicines. Eight bundles will you bring. You will need to dive deep to obtain what you seek. But that shall pose no trouble for a true warrior, no. Some say that the dominion of the Dawn Father and the Dusk Mother does not extend beneath the water, but ours does. Indeed, the Ornir fear not above nor below. Speak with the guard to descend. We shall speak again when you have finished. Okay. Speak with the spear son. Spearson? Yes, yes, I know who you are. You wish to go below. Okay, so I just have to swim around the lake a bit and find eight nuggets of sword grass. Down we go.
la 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 sa ma Being underwater with this flute music playing is giving me some serious Mario 64 water level flashbacks. Oh god, what was that? What was that music? It was like boop, 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 boop. no, that's Donkey Kong. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. I need a swordfish to ride on. Oh shit. Back down. Back down. More sword grass. So I'm directly under the city now. Under the big bowl. There we go. Hiding in this little nook. Do it, do it, do it. Deliver to Batu. Alright, now this will be a little simpler. Screw swimming. I'm out. He returns, and with sword grass in hand. But of course, that you would immerse yourself in the depths of the testament to your bravery. Well done. Lest you wonder, we will use it to prepare potions to induce paralysis. In the Nadam, we must use every means at our disposal to delay our foes. He who inscribes his deeds upon the sacred ground shall be declared the victor. However, none may know this place until the Garl has scattered the soil. It matters not. We shall be swift as stallions and fierce as Baras. The step will be ours once more. Your tribute is accepted. We will return to the most radiant, and you may beg a boon. Beg a boon? Dingus. <clears throat> Am I to understand you've completed your tasks? I know not what yours was, but mine was surprisingly simple. They bade me carry various goods and sundries from storehouse to storehouse. Alas, it was difficult to learn much with all the Baduga swarming around me. Buduga. 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 You dove deep into the waters to harvest sword grass? I see. That is well. Most radiant brother Magni, we have given you tribute, as demanded. Were we to beg leave to depart with our comrades, would you consent?
We never intended to press you into our service, and tribute offered in good faith cannot be denied. To grant you not in return would be an affront to Father Azim. However, the boom must be proportional to the supplications. What you ask far exceeds what you have earned. Then what else do I have to do for you, King Douchebag? Then if we remain here, would you at least permit us to learn more of your people and your ways? I might do what? Timulan Katun taught me but a fraction, you see. How this world born of the gods was to be their battlefield, their creations to fight in their stead. How Azim, father of the dawn, he who birthed the sun, and Nama, mother of the dusk, she who birthed the moon, made the all Ra. Yet these children warred for a time. Eventually they laid down their arms and came to love one another. And so the gods bequeathed this world to their children, and ascended to the heavens whence they came. Those born of the dawn father were called the rain, and those born of the dusk mother were called the Zela. So it was, and ever after. But I say to you, Brother Magni, how can this be? How can Oranir be the children of Azim, if they are Zela born of Nam? You amuse me, Doman. How you wield your ignorance as a weapon. Very well. I bid you speak with our elders and learn the truth of this world. The truth is, the whole Rain Zela thing is completely random. I know what you're thinking, and yes, I could probably have convinced him to let us go had I handled that differently. But then we would have learned naught for our troubles. If there is one thing I know, it is that men of faith yearn to share it with others. And in learning more of their beliefs, we may learn more of other things, things which may prove useful in the Nada. When I was carrying out my tasks, I met an elder, a storyteller, named Hudatai. Mayhap he can be our teacher. Okay. Let's go check out this Hudutai. I can spare no time for you. Other troubles demand my attention. What troubles? What ill fortune has befallen you? Not me, but my lambs. Some few wandered far and have yet to return. Mayhap they will return to their mothers in time. Mayhap they will not. Mayhap you can help. If we must, then we must. Let us be about it, Spacalus. Find lost lambs. More with these freaking lambs. There we go, there's one. Oh my lord, that noise. Sheep peep. Sheep peep.
Land number two. Lem lem lem. Oh yeah, you little meepers. There you are. Number three, meep. Uh, maybe behind it? There is a lamb. Oh, there's Hian. There's two of them. It's not the one I'm looking for. He already found those. Hi. There, you little jerk. The slam got adventurous. Holla at your boy! No. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, I found all your little meepers. Now. Please give me the information I need. Don't make me do any more nonsense. I would be greatly appreciative. Old man, ooh to tie. Greetings. I trust all of our little explorers are safely accounted for. That they are. <clears throat> My thanks to you, Gelman. Now, you had questions for me. Aye, I would know more of the Orinir, of their creation, and of Father Azim. As you wish. Come, let us sit. Before we begin, tell me, what do you know of the Aura, and how they came to be? None. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, a common tale, and one believed by many tribes. But what it does not mention is this. Azim and Nama were lovers. Do what? Two gods bumping it out. Oh, they fought in the beginning, as did their creations. That much is true. But when they saw how the Zela and the Rain rose above their hatreds and joined hands in harmony, their hearts stirred and the love their children shared became theirs as well. Alas, he was of the sun and she of the moon. Apart they must remain, lest day and night cease to be, and with them all creation. With sadness in their hearts they returned to the heavens, he to the day, she to the night, destined to walk before and after, never to meet. As time passed, Azim's yearning for his beloved grew deeper still. Was there truly naught that could be done, he wondered? At last, he knew. If the father cannot be with the mother, then he shall go amongst her children, now and ever after. So it was that Azim took a fragment of his being, and with it fashioned an avatar. Clad in scale of midnight, he descended and sought out the Zela. Yea, he was the first Orinir, 
We are of his flesh and his blood. We are the children of Azim, and it is our duty to watch over and keep the Zayla safe. I confess, I did not expect the tale of your people's beginnings to be quite so romantic. Yet I must ask, if it is your duty to defend the Zela, how can you go to war with them in an Adam? Is that not a contradiction? If a father disciplines his son, does that mean there is no love in his heart? Zela are not want to kneel. They must be made to kneel. Only then will they heed reason. I see. Such is the way of the step. Thank you, Elder, for sharing with us your wisdom. Eager to depart? Ere you go, you would do well to hear the end of my tale. When Nama looked down and saw the avatar of Azim, she knew him at once and shed tears of love and longing. When they struck the earth, they rose anew, as a counterpart to the Oranir, their fates entwined. So you see, for every son of Azim is a daughter of Nama, for whom he must search, even now. Mm-hmm. Okay. I should use this before I forget. Let's put this bad boy on the hot bar somewhere. Yo yo yo. Mayhap I am being overly optimistic. But I sense that these Oranir may prove loyal allies to Doma under the right circumstances. Their arrogance is rooted in the belief that they must act as caretakers of all Zela. Therefore, if we can prove to them that we come as kindred spirits, seeking to defeat a common foe. But mayhap this is a discussion for after we win the Nadam. Come, let us return to Magna. Okay, can do. Actually, no, hold up. We'll fly the new bird. Scree! Shine with the light of newfound wisdom. Could it be that you have at last accepted the supremacy of the sun? No matter. You have each completed your tasks and proven yourselves deserving of mercy. However, if it is freedom you desire, then there's one more thing you must do. One more thing. And that is. Healing and casting gloves. They're not that much better. I may go for the healing ones just because. A pity you will not pledge yourselves to the sun. You might have proved useful in becoming Nadam. Nevertheless, I will permit you to return and fight for the Maul. Their cause is futile, with or without your assistance. However, you must first complete a final task, as was my decree. You will reconnoiter the encampment of the Dothar. For this task, two will go, and two will remain. Should the two who embark upon this expedition choose to flee, or be captured or killed by the Dothar, then the others will be taken as slaves and serve the sun unto death. Oh, hell no. We better not fail then, eh? Question is, who should we send? Obviously me. 
That is not for you to decide. All of you have conquered Bardom's Medal and proven yourselves warriors of the step. You should all be equally capable of carrying out this task, and therefore, you should have no objections. Yes? The first choice of hostage shall be mine though it is hardly a choice, given the circumstances. The Red Woman will remain. Doubtless you are not the moon I seek, but stranger tales have been told, and the men are of no use to me. You may have your pick of the men. Hmm, yes, yes. Of course, I'm going to pick him. Don't look at me, fuck boy. I don't want none. The Firewalker. Yes, this dome is my choice. Ha ha ha. I don't know whether to be flattered or insulted. May have both. I had hoped to see these undying ones from myself, but it seems it was not meant to be. I know you will be fine, but permit me to wish you luck all the same. We will return soon, my lord. But if the Kami are unkind, and we fail in our mission, then do what you must to survive for Doma. Dothar Ka lies far to the south, where the grass turns to sand. Return with valuable knowledge, and all will be free to rejoin the mob. Now go. Now you? Have no fear, my friend. We shall see them freed soon enough. Let us quit this place and speak of our plans outside. Beautiful. So we have to go... okay, have to go Setsu first. It is plain they hope we will never return. <clears throat> I shall enjoy disappointing them. According to my map, there is a colossal wreck to the south, which should provide a vantage point from which to sever Dothar Ka from afar. Let us go and do just that. They dancing. Oh, a quest. The Sujin. A man not of the steppe. How unusual. Were it that I had the time, I would take you and acquaint you with all our small settlement. Alas, as the Oraniri's only culinary, time is a rare commodity. I must keep all fifty of our warriors fed. Thankfully, now that the meat has been cut and the entrails soaked, all that's left for me to do is... Bah, I'm out of sheep's milk. This is a disaster. If I leave to milk sheep now, I will fall behind on cooking, and the starved masses are sure to lynch me upon their return. I am loath to have to ask you of this, especially since we are virtual strangers, but might you fetch me some milk? About three pails should suffice. On the other side of our encampment is Sorakan. You would need to receive his, her permission first to approach the sheep. Okay. Well, quick. Quick ether quest pit stop here. Z 
zoom in the map a little bit. What's up, Soro Can? Essigen sent you that he would ask an outsider of all people to do his work for him. The man has not a shred of common sense. Any road. Sheep are just over there. Feel free to take as much milk as you need. Sure. Fatten sheep. Give me that juice. I need some sheep juice. Buckets of sheep juice. Strength Materia 6 dropped from Gugane Castle. Or Temple of the Fist. It's nice. Aha! You showed up in the nick of time. You've brought the sheep's milk, right? Ew, it's still slightly warm. Gross. Bless you, my friend. From our foods to our tea, we use this milk for nearly everything. That is why I must maintain a constant watch over my supplies. It is, however, something that has become increasingly difficult to do of late. The number of hungry mouths I must feed grows by the day, but I remain our only culinarian. Is Essigen bothering you? You need not pay him any heed. He is inconsequential to our tribe. But <laughs> the man is nearly 40. Yet the only thing he can properly wield is a ladle. Whatever, you're just a hater. Kuzuku is right. I am feeble. The weakest among our brothers. It should come as no surprise, then, that here, in a tribe where your standing hinges solely upon how strong you are, I am afforded little respect. When everyone else is out hunting, I am left here to cook whatever they brought back from their last excursion. While most Oranir will claim that all brothers under our most radiant brother, Magni, are equal, nothing could be further from the truth. I wish to be stronger, strong enough to prove to them that I am not worthless. Say, might you agree to help me with my cooking on occasion? It would afford me the time to train and earn my place among the other warriors. Ha! You certainly know how to brighten a man's day. Thank you, Master... Zuma Kallus? It is good to finally be able to put a name to your face. And someday I will... Return to help him with his cooking. Oh, Effie joined. Joined the uh, Huntman shell. Nice. Now, what we're looking for is down here by the Dusk Throne. So just, you know, leap. Whee! Ow. I kind of expected to hit the water, but in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't. It would have taken much longer to get out. Let's head down here to this Dusk Throne. Take a peek and see what we can discover about this other tribe. This other people.
Look out. Okay, what am I looking for? Over there, look! Those men are in danger. <clears throat> wow. Gah, too late for that one, perhaps. But there's yet time to save the other. Come, we cannot abandon him to his fate. Being attacked by freaky yetis. Desert yeti. Well, hold on now. Oh, there's a fate with Baras in it. Yeah, I don't want to wander through that, maybe. Stick to the objective for now. All right, Hunter, I'm here. Railing Manza Siri. How you doing there, Hunter? Get a little scrape, a little boo-boo, a little scuffed up knees. <coughs> I, <coughs> I owe you my life. Nay, friend, think nothing of it. I but wish we had come sooner. I knew at once he was dead. It will come as scant comfort, I fear. But I slew the beast responsible. Nay, that is no way for a Dotharl to die. What is this? Who are these outsiders? Hi, lady. It's the mother of dragons. Sadu Khatun, forgive me. We were returning from our hunt when we were caught unawares by Manza Siri. These ones saved me, but guess here is. Who are you? Why have you come? Not to cross the sands, that much is certain. I have heard tales of travelers in league with another tribe. Are you they? Who do you serve? Answer me. If I may begin to answer your questions before you ask more. We are friends of the Maul, and we are come to see the strength of the Dadathara for ourselves. The Maul? The little lambs who wander to and fro at the behest of their gods. Fools are you are to share the soil of such weaklings. Next you will tell me you wish to fight in the Nadam. Ah, so you do. Ha. That is unexpected, yet not unwelcome. I am Sadu, Khatun of the Dathara. For your deeds, I grant you leave to walk among us. Come. Look on our glory and despair. We fear no tribe. Least of all the mole. Though if you were of the Ornir, I would burn the flesh from your bones here and now. Well then. Better not tell them why we're really here. You can stand, yes. See to the corpse. Y yes, Katun.
Well, that was one stone cold bitch. So that is the leader of the Dissarl. Clearly not a woman to be crossed. But how callously she spoke of her dead. See to the corpse. Surely this warrior deserves better than that. Yeah, I'll take the heel gloves. Could probably use those a bit more. Let's see. 